James Cartledge, I believe, is with us now. He's the Minister of State for Defence Procurement. He's also the MP for South Suffolk. Mr Cartledge, hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I had put this question to uh, my guest, Nigel Nelson, earlier. We've had John Healy, your Labour counterpart, so to speak, uh, talking about the fact that our armed forces have been hollowed out. The fact that we can't deploy HMS Queen Elizabeth to the Red Sea does suggest that our defences are woefully underfunded, under-resourced. We're not in a great position, are we, to be involving ourselves in these affairs in the Middle East? Well, thanks, Camilla. It's a pleasure to be on your programme. And just to be absolutely clear, there is no truth whatsoever in the suggestion that uh, we cannot deploy the carrier. I'm pleased to confirm both our carriers um, are in Portsmouth, they are at readiness, and they are available to be deployed if needed, if the operational decision is that that is the appropriate response. Um, just, just to highlight, because I appreciate there has been some coverage at this point, um, uh, it, Queen Elizabeth, one of the carriers, uh, returned only eight weeks ago from a 13,000 nautical mile mission to uh, the North Sea and the Baltic Sea. Um, so we, uh, it, it's not true that we can deploy them. I think what it is focused on is the fact that one of the support ships is about to go into an upgrade. That's very common. It's uh, in, in Liverpool maintenance of the ship, um, but we have other support ships available. OK. Um, do you envisage that there will be more strikes that the UK will support in the near future? Um, I think the key the key point is this: um, the we, we have to get the correct characterization of, of the military effort undertaken so far, which was a very specific, targeted strike, proportionate, justified under international law. Of course, we don't rule out further action if it was justified. And what is going to be the impact on the British people? I speak, of course, in terms of prices going up. We know how strategic and important that shipping lane <clears throat> is to the Western world. 12% of global trade passes through that area. Inevitably, are we going to be seeing prices go up again? Is this going to hamper Rishi Sunak's target for keeping inflation down? What's the impact and what the government going to do to help people in the UK? Well, it's a very good question. As you know, we've made huge progress on the plan to cut inflation. We halved it by the end of the year, as the Prime Minister promised. So obviously, we don't want to see that being reversed. That's why it's so important that we've undertaken the military action that we have. The Houthis were um, attacking international shipping from many countries. They've been doing so since November, wholly uh, unjustified, ind indiscriminate attacks, which put lives at risk, let alone economic consequences. And of course, ultimately, they attacked a British naval vessel, HMS Diamond, which put us in the position where the Prime Minister concluded, uh, concluded that he had no choice but to act in the manner that he did. Were you disappointed that our European partners, France, Germany and Italy, uh, didn't join this action? They're meant to be in coalition with us, but they've sat on their hands, haven't they? I think that uh, those countries have issued condemnation of the attacks uh, on shipping in the Red Sea. And of course, many countries' ships were affected. Um, but we had support from uh, Bahrain, from uh, Canada, Australia, the Netherlands, uh, and Germany. Uh, and I think that there is a wide consensus that we cannot allow this to go on. Um, but of course, it was a British naval ship that was attacked, as American vessels were. And so we as partners decided under self-defense, which is a right under the UN Charter, Article 51, that we therefore it was necessary to take these, these strikes. They were very proportionate, targeted, an act of self-defense. Um, and now the key is we continue to patrol in the Red Sea under Operation Prosperity Guardian and very much keeping a watching eye with our allies on what happens next. Um, let's just return to domestic matters, Mr Cartledge. You'll probably have seen the headlines this morning talking about Rishi Sunak's Rwanda bill threatened to be torn to pieces by MPs. You've got some on one side of your party, the likes of uh, Marc Francois um, and uh, Danny Kruger and others, threatening that they will not vote for this bill unless it is strengthened, unless key amendments are added to it. And then you've got the One Nation group saying that they won't vote for it if it is amended. So the Prime Minister's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Meanwhile, Robert Jenrick and Suella Braverman, who were involved in the drafting of the legislation, say it isn't strong enough, it's not going to stop the boats. So it's a disaster, isn't it? Well, of course, it's, it's a hugely important issue where we've made enormous progress. As you know, um, small boat crossings down a third last year, when in many European countries um, you've seen sort of asylum numbers surging. Um, I think in, in Europe, 80% increase. Um, the point is, before second reading, which was before Christmas, we heard this sort of talk about um, the situation in Parliament, uh, and, and of course it passed very comfortably. That's not to say we won't be engaging as a government with backbenchers from 
you know, with, with a wide range of views. I think that's absolutely right. But the key message is this. This is a very robust piece of legislation. It will enable us to create a deterrent so that we actually get people on the planes to Rwanda. We think that will send a very strong message because we've seen only today the terrible, tragic consequences of this horrific trade in human beings. And it's why we have to get this legislation through and why I'm bound to say where we have a clear plan to deal with small boats, our opponents have no plan and will take us back to square one and have opposed all these measures. So, yes, it's going to be a busy week in Parliament. It will be a busy week in Parliament. James Cartledge, uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning.